Hello again, everybody. This is Chris Mackey, and this is your second official um, tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And in this one, we're going to be looking at, uh, at taking sort of our rhino geometry, our basic rhino geometry, and turning it into, uh, into energy plus zones. Um, and I'm going to explain what zones are in this, but essentially, I mean, we're going to be assigning the properties to this geometry that's needed for, for running an energy simulation. Things like constructions and, and things like, uh, you know, when the people are in the space and how much lights they have turned on and all those things. We're going to assign those in this video here. So you guys may, if you watched the last one, you know that we're going to be modeling uh, for this for this series. We're going to be modeling my, my parents' house. Um, and, uh, and yes, there are some selfish uh, reasons for doing this. I mean, I, I've had plans to try and uh, do some energy retrofits to, to the home for, uh, for some time. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so we're going to test out a few of those probably in the course of this series. Um, but the thing is, all right, so we have the, our, this house, which you guys can get by downloading the example file uh, that's, that's in the description of this video. Um, and you'll see that, that you'll have the geometry actually already in a Grasshopper file. Uh, but I'm going to show you in this video just how, how I bring this into Grasshopper so that you guys can use this on your own projects relatively easily. Um, but first, also, I kind of want to show you guys what exactly we're going to be bringing in. So, so I've got a few things in this model. I mean, I've got like the ground and some context and some things that we're not necessarily worried about that. But this is, I mean, we just really need the house right now. And actually, you know what? I think we're going to leave out the, the basement of the house for the sake of brevity in, in this series. So, so this, is, this is essentially how, how energy models are constructed. They're constructed as a set of these closed boundary representations that you see here in Rhino. Um, and in the energy model understand these things as zones. Uh, and essentially a zone is like a zone is a room or, or it's, a, it's a microclimate of a building. It's, uh, it's essentially, I mean, it's, it's an area of a building where it's assumed that the, the air is well mixed, um, I guess, and that you have, you have a uniform air temperature throughout the whole space. Um, and so you usually will break up your building into a few zones depending on um, um, you know, how many rooms there are and, and how many different microclimates there might be. Uh, but in this one, you'll see I broke it up into, let's see, 15 zones that we're going to be modeling in this house. And they're all kind of, they're all closed geometries and they're all next to each other. And it's important that whatever you're going to be energy modeling with Energy Plus, it's important that you have closed geometry. Um, and I'm going to show you there are a few pathways of taking rhino geometry and turning it into zones. Um, and I'm going to show you one of them in this video. But, but the important thing is that, oh yeah, that in order to be able to run it through an energy simulation, it must be, it must be closed uh, altogether in the first place. Um, so, all right. So first off, guys, I'm going to bring the, this geometry into Rhino. So I'm just going to select all of this this stuff. And you guys will already have this in the Grasshopper file, so don't necessarily fret too much about following along. But I'm just going to drop down a B rep, and I, you know, you do that. You know, you guys know how to search. Probably you should you should have some familiarity with Grasshopper if you're if you're going into this advanced uh, honeybee stuff. But all right, we've got our geometry, and then you'll right click on the B rep and set multiple B reps. And you'll see that you know that the the these houses these house zones turn you know turn orange or green depending on whether you select the B rep, and that tells you that you've brought the 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 geometry data of the house into into Grasshopper. Um, and I'm going to do one other thing that you guys I mean I don't know it, it took me a long time of working with Grasshopper to figure this out, but you can right click on on any sort of uh, uh, sort of input into Grasshopper and uh, and do internalize data and this will essentially assure that you know the next time you open this grasshopper file even if you don't have the rhino file attached to it the geometry information of these b-reps will still will still is preserved in the grasshopper file and you know it'll load that automatically so all right so now we brought into grasshopper we don't necessarily need the rhino so much anymore so i'm going to just i'm going to hide these 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 geometries there and you know and you can kind of see what it's like when when it's brought into into grasshopper now and you know and actually I'm going to I'm going to turn the preview off on these B reps right now because we're going to we're going to be doing some uh, some different things to these B reps um, so all right so I mean right now B reps are just geometry information I mean as you guys can guess I mean Rido is a geometry engine I mean there's there's nothing really more inside these B reps defining them other than just the geometry um, and so, so we need to add more properties to them in order to be able to run them through a simulation. And we're going to do that with this important component called mass to zones. Um, and this allows you to take basically any B rep that you, you want to represent a zone and assigns all these properties for the energy simulation. So if you guys would drag and drop that onto your canvas, um, 
And you'll notice, and I mean, so it takes the really key thing that it takes in order to run this component is a zone mass. And you'll see if you, you that's where you essentially connect the BREP and you'll see, you know, it's the description's a list of closed BREPs. Um, and then, you know, then you just need to set this Boolean, this create honeybee zones to true. So I'm just going to pull up a Boolean toggle there by searching Boolean toggle and connect it to true. And you'll see what we get out of this is again, some B reps. So I mean, I, and this is this is a, a concept that I know can sometimes take a while to understand. If uh, you know, because you you put in a B rep and you get out, well, you know, you can see here if you do that, you get out the same B reps. So it's it's hard, kind of hard to see at first, like what actually did we do there? You put in the same things or get out, but actually this component is is assigning a bunch of defaults of, of all these extra properties to these BREPs um, when, when you're running this component. And actually the things that are coming out of here have these, these special properties. And uh, let's see, I mean, I'll show you a few just for, for example. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that BREP. But there's a few, if you look under the, the Honeybee, uh, the, the Honeybee Honeybee tab, there's this cool component called um, decomposed based on type. And it's this one with these kind of like funky colored arrows. And you see that you just, you can pl uh, plug in any sort of honeybee zones into this. And what it will do is that'll show you that when actually, when, when it created these honeybee zones, it actually, there were different things that were assigned to, to, to walls, to roofs. So you see that there are different things in here. Um, and I mean, if I was to say like pull up a preview, a custom preview component, and just hook up the walls to that, you'd see in your rhino scene, like the, the things that were auto assigned to just be walls. And I mean, there's kind of showing this weird pink color right now. So I'm just going to pull up a swatch and I don't know, maybe we'll take a nice, uh, nice yellowish color, maybe like light yellowish, um, because that's actually the color of my, my wonderful parents' house. Um, and, uh, and so you see some things are automatically being assigned as, as walls. Some things are automatically being assigned as roofs and maybe we'll give them a different color. I don't know. I guess I guess my parents kind of have a uh, kind of have a, a a black shingle roof. So some things are being assigned as roofs, um, and then some things are being assigned as floors. Um, and so so let's see. We'll take in floors, and maybe we'll also take. There's actually a difference between uh, just floors between within a building and floors uh, that are on the ground floor. And maybe we'll give those a kind of like nice, maybe like reddish color, red, red for, for the earth. And so you can see what's, what's being assigned here. So it didn't actually assign everything that we had wanted correctly. Cause like you see, for example, this, this roof right here, the, the roof of the house was assigned as a wall in yellow. Um, so that's something that we can change right now. And you'll see that that results because there is this thing called the maximum roof angle. And, uh, and so, so we need to basically increase this maximum roof angle in order for to get the, this component to recognize that this slanted thing is a roof. Um, and so I'm just going to set it to 45 and plug it into there. And then you should see when it recalculates, when it returns these things into zones, all right, now it's got, now it's assigning the roofs correctly. Um, and, and that's, a, that's a, so you begin to see like how you, you get to control these things. Um, and then you see other things actually though. I mean, so you can also start to see other problems like look like the floors are being, you know, actually assigned or these ceilings are being assigned as roofs. Uh, and the thing is we want them as internal ceilings and you'll see in the next video, we'll get to addressing that as we, we have a component that kind of solves adjacencies for us. But, but I mean, in the meantime, you guys see it, you actually get a bunch of other pretty important inputs here. Um, so the thing is you can put in a list of names that correspond to all the BREPs so that you can name your zones and keep track of them. And, um, and, uh, and so you can change that. And this other very important thing is that you can set a program for the zones. And so this is the really powerful thing of, of what we created because you can set all, all these defaults of schedules of when people are in the, in the space and how much, how much the, you know, the lights are and all these different things based on the program. And the way that you do that is that there is a, a sort of list of possible building programs here in, uh, in, the, in the, the Honeybee list. And if you drag and drop that onto the canvas, you'll see that there's a, a sort of drop down menu that you get access to defaults for all these different building types. So you have an office, a retail, a mid-rise apartment, all these cool things that you guys can try out. Um, and the thing is though, but, but in addition to actually to having those, those building programs, there's also, if you pull down this honeybee list, list zone program um, and drop that onto the canvas and you could hook up the building program and you realize that you get a lot of a lot of, I mean, I'm going to pull up a panel here to show you guys what's, what's in here. Um, but a lot of um, 
potential zone programs for that building. So within the office, you can have room, different zones for a break room, storage, open office, closed office, print room, all these different things, restroom, all these, these things. So you guys can already get a sense of, of how powerful this thing is. And so, all right, for my parents' house, let's, let's pick a sort of, I mean, our building program is probably pretty close to a mid-rise apartment. And you'd see, so we get a few zone programs for that. Um, and you guys can see probably some, some spaces in my house are probably more like a corridor. People aren't occupying them too often and some are, are probably like an apartment. And if I had the time to go through each one of these zones and assign those different things, I, I would. But for, for the sake of brevity right now, guys, I'm just going to assign everything as a sort of apartment schedule. So, you know, assuming that, that most of the spaces in the house are, tend to be occupied by people. So to get that first one, I'm just going to pull up the, you know, our standard, uh, you know, gra native grasshopper list item component just by searching for list item. And you can plug in the list. Of, actually, you know what? Instead of using the native grasshopper, we actually, this wonderful man named Andrew Human uh, actually just recently gave us a an, an very easy way to, uh, to select this. He's got this cool item selector. And if you drag and drop that and hook up the, the zone programs, you'll see you get another drop down list for all those options. And yeah, you know, and this is cool because it can change based on you know what what the building program is. So all right, so I'll go mid-rise apartment, and we want we want the just the basic apartment schedule, and I'm just going to plug that into the zone programs, um, and you know now it's assigning defaults for all of, all of the zone programs, um, and you guys can see that there are other things that you can change here, like is it conditioned? Is it you know? Is it, is it all these other things? But, but you guys get the basic sense now of how, how to set up these zones and sort of and what's, what are the types of things that are being assigned. Um, and actually in the next video we're going to, because this one's run kind of long, we're going to look at uh, actually some more deeper properties of things that have been assigned, like constructions and schedules and all these other things. And I'll show you guys how to look, the, look at these things and test them. Um, so, all right, so I hope you guys learned something from this video and I'll see you in the next one.